So for the past couple of months, I've been doing some testing between the two cameras here. One is the R5C and the other one is the R6. And I'm curious to know, even though these two lenses are different, one is the 24 to 105 f4, and this is the 50 millimeter f1.8, both RF. What I wanted to see was the difference between image quality and to see if you can actually see a difference. Now, they're both set at f4. So this is f4 is the minimum aperture. This is f1.8 is its minimum aperture. I've got them both set at f4 right now. So I wanted to see if you can tell the difference between the two files. One is in Rec 709 and the other one is in RAW and I put a light color grade on it. There's a good chance you might be able to tell the difference between just the color grade and the other one being in Rec 709, but I'm also gonna do the same test with both in Rec 709. So I'm curious to know if you can see the difference between the two. Again, one we're filming on the R6, and the other one we are filming on the R5C. So now, let's do this same test. We'll put the R5C in Rec 709, and we'll leave the R6 in Rec 709 simply because shooting in log on the R6 is a pain in the ass. The colors never come out right. Even now that I've been using DaVinci Resolve for well over a year and a half, it is still horrific. <laughs> the, the, the C Log 3 on this is nothing compared to the C Log 3 on the R5C. And this is a very good sensor on the R6. In fact, this camera takes amazing photos and it takes very, very, very good video. I have both the ISO set at 800. The minimum ISO, the first base ISO in the R5C is 800. And the ISO on the R6 is minimum for 800 when you're shooting in log and I believe 400 when you're shooting in Rec 709. I wanted to keep it congruent so I kept them both in uh, ISO of 800. When I used the R6 for weddings, I was shooting in auto ISO. I was using the 24 to 105 and during my day scenes, my day shots outside, I would use an ND filter so I was able to keep my you know, exposure levels correct. And then when it came down to the interior shots at night, the auto ISO worked very, very well on this camera. The past two weddings, I've been using the R5C. That one I'm keeping at base ISO of 800 for my exterior shots. Of course, I'm putting an ND filter on it. And then during my interior shots, when it's darker and it's nighttime and you wanna get some nice quality images, I'm able to bump that ISO up to 3200. I have even put it up to 6400 and 12800. And the image quality is still fantastic. So this was kind of one of those tests, like maybe you're curious to see, hey, what is the difference in quality at both 50 millimeter, both at F4, both at ISO 800, and both at Rec 709. Even though this clip these two clips are not Rec 709 compat. Like one is, you know, one is log and one is Rec 709. I am now going to hit stop and I'm going to put them both in Rec 709. Let's see if you can tell the difference between the two. This shot, I'm sure you can tell the difference between which one was color graded and which one is in the natural colors of the Canon Color Science. Let's see if you can tell the difference in this next clip here. All right, we are back. Which clip is the R5C and which clip is the R6? I'm curious to know if you can tell the difference. Is it that dramatic of a difference when they're both shooting? Oh, by the way, I forgot to say they're both shooting in 4K. Now, yes, you can bump this R5C up to 6K, 8K. Are you gonna be able to even send that file to somebody? Most likely not. If you're using this on a production, a heavy production set, yes, you might want to use 6K. You're gonna use a ton of storage. And the cool thing about the 4K on the R5C is that it is down sampled from that 8K sensor. So you have a very, very solid image no matter where you are. I've even shot clips in the wedding that I just recently did in 2.7K, 
and it was phenomenal. The clips came out absolutely stunning. The look was perfect. And the only reason why I did that was because of file size. I wanted to keep my file size as small as possible. So this was a really fun one. This was one that I would, I've been you know, looking to do this one for a while. I'm also gonna be doing some more test comparisons later on this week and into next week in some night shots. What are the differences between the two in night? And we will keep it the same as far as our ISO. Meaning I'll shoot it in 800 ISO, I'll shoot it in 3200 ISO, up to 6400, and even 12,800. So you guys let me know in the comments which image you like the best. Excuse the uh, 3D printer there singing its little song when it's done. You guys tell me which image quality you like the best. And I'm really curious, throw it in the comments what kind of camera that you use for your filming video. That's it from me. Stay tuned for more videos. I had made a video about my back a couple of days ago and that is where I've been. I'm still in recovery mode here. I've got some disc issues and some sciatic issues which has really put a damper on my creativity as well as my being able to create. But keep, uh, keep, keep posted, there'll be some things coming out. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe and the notification bell so you get notified for these videos. If this is something that you're enjoying these videos and you're not subscribed, just click the subscribe button. It's totally free and it shows me that the content that I'm making is actually stuff that you guys and gals want to see. Also, don't be afraid to throw it in the comments what kind of videos you'd like me to create within the field of photo, video, and drone and I'd be more than happy to accommodate you on that. That's it, test number one down, and we will continue this test over the next couple of weeks. Have a great afternoon, and I will see you guys soon.